Warning. The following program is recorded live and is not intended for children. This program should be considered entirely fictional and should not be used for political or academic purposes. Facts are not checked and no sources or citations will be provided. This program should be considered performance art. Thank you for joining us. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. Meow. Hello, and welcome back to another editing session. Today we're reading a... I'm not really sure what genre, actually. I don't even know the title. It is um, written by someone who has, as usual, granted me permission to use on my YouTube channel, and I plan to do so accordingly. So let's jump right into this. I'm going to go for about a half an hour, see as far as I get. Uh, maybe I'll go a full hour if I'm feeling it. As a younger man, I loved rain. I do like this introduction. I too once was a younger man. The dew on the, <laughs> the, dew on the leaves. Oh, that's the whole sentence? I don't know, it seems a little choppy. As a young man, I loved the rain. The dew on the leaves. The color of the sky as the clouds clear. Okay, you're trying to be dramatic by playing around with your grammar. Please don't do this. Goodbye kisses beneath sputtering street lamps. Like, it, it, it is poetic, but... I don't, it's, it's too cliche. I want a character before I want cliches. Like, I get it, you're writing cliches. It's like a sad boy, like, go play guitar. Caught in the open, running for shelter, laughing. Living under a bridge. <laughs> like a Nirvana song. Now I loathe it. When the first drops fall, my stomach becomes ulcerous with dread. I like that. I only work in the rain. I really like that. The night echoed, I don't like that. So, and here's why I don't like that. So let's go over this actually. So first of all, let me just check and see what happens if I do this. Oh shit, okay, that's a problem. We have to go to click this and we have to click to edit. No, suggesting. Let me try again. Perfect. Fantastic, okay, so. The night echoed with the rapping of my fist on a door. I guess that works. It's just that, like, ugh, the subject shouldn't really be the knight. It's like, it's giving character to the knight in a way that's like, if that's what you want to do, you've accomplished it. A window slammed a few houses down. Throughout the street, faces watched me through gaps in blinds and cracked doors. Yeah, I guess, I guess all this works. Slime and moss caked the bricks of the terrace before me. Unrepaired gutters channeled the rain through passages in the stone. Metal ratted as a bolt. Unla okay, we're getting off. We're, we need something to happen that isn't just the night. Like, I get it. You're trying to characterize it. But, like, this needs to be between dialogue if there's going to be dialogue. And if there's not going to be dialogue, I'm bored. There was a thud as the person on the other side struggled to dislodge the warped wood from the frame. It jerked open to reveal an elderly man. He looked up at me, his hunched figure just below my shoulder. His hair was thin and patchy, his clothes faded and threadbare. He gestured inside. I stepped into the room. The door shut behind me, and the man hobbled past, each step lilting to the side. He did not use a cane. Like, this, this, like, imagine, okay, let's, let me show you something. Imagine this is being written as green text, right? Like, just green green texting. Like, this is, this is a problem. Actually, it's, it breaks here. And so, so these are all different bits of information we now have to parse. Like, this is too much. You see what I mean? There's just, like, there's a lot going on here. And, and and I get that this is, like, supposed to be, like, dramatic, but you're losing me. Because, like, it's not even interesting writing. Like, you're not writing about anything that, like, deserves this amount of ink to be spilled on it. It's just, like, it's a dark and stormy night. Okay, we skipped all the way down here. A single candle lit the room in the house's soul room, filling its corners with... 
brooding darkness. Oh, geez, come on. Filling his corners with brooding. Are you fucking with me when you sent me this? This is some. You no. The light reflected off the grime and mold on the walls, giving the space a sickly parlor. I don't like this word. I don't like the word space either. Like, I I get that you're describing the space, but like in this case, rather than describing the space, it should just say like the room had grime on the walls lit by candles like something like that like you just the three bits of information one sentence you're done water dripped from the ceiling collecting in an assortment of wooden bowls scattered across the floor yeah like this is all great information but like i'm bored i followed the old man wait this is inherent like we don't really need this rain drummed on the slat roof the plop and splash okay so okay here's what we're missing we're missing the smell we're missing the back uh the 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 back flat what's it called the fla flashback we're missing the flashback we're missing the mouse in the corner of the room we're missing the spirit that died there we're missing you know the the doorman the the doorbell getting rung and, and like it there's just so much going on here that like why don't we just talk about this next why don't we talk about that why don't you describe the paintings like there's too much and none of it seems relevant yet because we don't know who we are where we are or why and once we know that we can definitely introduce all these details or at least some of these details a lot of them seem kind of redundant it's like i get it it's brooding it's dark it's edgy or like sad or macabre i, I don't really know what it's going for and that's a problem that i don't know um i will warn you I have not a coin to my name. That's very good opening dialogue. I don't really know why you're using single dialogue things, but I guess it's like maybe stylistically a choice. I really don't understand that choice though. But I, I won't comment on it further. I'm not going to uh, lag. So I will warn you. I have not a coin to my name. The man's voice had a surprising strength. Okay, I, d I do like your dialogue so far. Copper tin, silver iron. You shan't find a silver of a sliver of metal. In this place, save the pipes and my chamber pot. Interesting. He didn't mention gold. He eased himself into a ragged armchair, one eyebrow tilted upward. Like this, I, I get that this is two sentences, but like, yeah, actually, yeah, I keep this as two sentences. Though I happen to have met a few friendly rats if you're in the animal trading game. I don't really understand the point of this dialogue, but okay. I searched the room for any objects of value. A handful of leather-bound books were arranged. So you're knocking on the door, like, are you there for money? Like, does he thinks you are. I searched the room for any objects of value. A handful of leather-bound books were arranged on the mantle of the fireplace. This would have been... So, we're, so this would have been... This is talking directly to us as a reader, and that's fine. But you have to know, like, what perspective... I guess I guess you've already kind of like br like used the word brooding, so I guess this like kind of works because it's like talking in meta, like like this is this is the flashback that I was talking about basically, like the meta discussion. This would have been the driest place in the house, though based on the dampness of the ash and charcoal in the fire pit, it hadn't been lit in some time. Like okay, I guess a lot of words. I leaned in reading their titles. The book's titles, okay, I see. Uh, we can probably move the stuff about... Yeah, it just seems like this isn't, like... You could just, like, delete all this and then just use the word, like, unused right here. You know what I mean? Like, hadn't hadn't been used in some time fireplace. Like, my keyboard's broken. I can't type it, but you could put that there. Okay, so the book is a tropos tristes its modern state the death of monarchism agrarian rev revanchism i don't know what this word is post-revolution i'm not this smart i removed one flicking through its pages through the parchment though the parchment was now faded and its bindings loosened by moisture it appeared of a quality inappropriate for its surroundings okay that's fine What about these? I asked, gesturing to the mantle. His smile was weak. This writing was weak. I can't imagine they're of much interest to your people. 
implying that they are two different people. Moreover, these books are banned. Okay. One might assume that would increase their value, but in our political climate, I would think they'd be more trouble than they're worth to a fence. I slipped the book back between its contemporaries. So now what? The man asked, leaning forward in his chair. Are you to take my finger? This is this is good. The last like paragraph or two has been good. An ear? Or is it something less trite, like my canine teeth? Oh, what if you were to cut some mark into my face, a symbol of something of the like? Isn't that how your type operates? Demonstrate power so others know not to defy you? Truly a method as old as civilization. Okay. So our biggest, deepest conflict here is like, maybe we're an oppressor there to rob somebody. And also, your people are mean and think ends justify the means. Like, okay. I'm I'm not seeing anything here that's like really grabbing my attention as a reader. Like why are we reading this? Who are these characters? It's like a it's like that it's like that Quentin Tarantino scene with the the Jew versus the Nazis where he's like Monsieur le Petit, yada yada yada, I am such a great actor, yada yada. It's like that, but like it's just slow. It's slow. There's no tension, there's no subtext. Um there's not enough text for there to be subtext. And the text that is here is being almost wholly devoted to describing things that like like let's let's give it to an AI. Let's do it. Let's let's see what happens when No, nah, let's not. Let's not cuz it's just going to be a boring room and that's my point. Like at best it's going to show us like okay, it's a room. So now what the man asked leaning forward in his chair. Oh, we already read that. I gave no response. Uh uh Crossing a wardrobe nestled. Crossing to a wardrobe nestled in the corner. It was empty save for a stack of Ron papers. If you're to mark me up, at least make it aesthetically pleasing, he continued. I won't stomach sloppy work on my person. I'd rather you just clobber me to death right now than leave me covered in wonky lines. I find n- nothing more offensive than bad art. It's pretty funny. The box at the end of his cot proved similarly disappointing, containing only a snapped quill and a blanket that was more whole than fabric. The man watched me from his chair. Okay. Uh, Save yourself the trouble. I have not a single object in my possession that might provide the value you have sent, you have been sent to collect. This is redundant dialogue. We've literally seen this said before. You need to come up with something better or move it down there and have him say something else up above. With a grasp of exertion, he heaved himself upright. Losing balance, he tumbled towards the ground. What? With a gasp of exertion, he heaved himself upright. Losing balance, he tumbled towards the ground. I stepped forward, catching him in my arms, helping him back to his chair. He nodded his thanks and muttered something self-deprecating under his breath. I don't really understand what's like supposed to have been happening here. Like, Is this like a secret like ploy to like poison him or something? I don't know. You still haven't told me the price for my sin, and such a grievous sin it is to be poor. So is it my ear ideally a finger? If you must, do you take it from my left hand? I hope to write again someday. One last book before consumption takes me. I don't know. Yeah, I guess. uh, Never mind. I guess we won't delete that. It just seems like too superfluous. Like, so what is, so you still haven't told me the price for my sin. I hope to write again, like, like, ideally not a finger. I hope to write again before consumption takes me. Like that, we can remove so much words here. And I think in, in most cases so far that we've been reading through, like this, this is indicative of the type of editing that, that the whole entire thing needs. And so I won't belabor this point and I won't uh, stress myself out trying to figure out exactly which words to, to delete. But you see what I mean, like how much better that flows. I, I think so, at least. It could just be that the old man is verbose and just like superfluous with his words, but it seems like more of like a, a narration uh, issue. 
than, than, than a character that is doing something performatively to the ends of telling the story, you know what I mean? Or like characterizing it. Like if it really is that important that he uses that many words or he's like stalling for time, then we need to know that and we need to know what the stakes are before it's just kind of this like weird Monsieur Le Petit scene. I did not respond to his question. This is like the second time we've had like an explicit or implicit negative. I struggled to swallow the truth of the situation. It's stuck in my throat like a rogue bone. A drop of water fell from the ceiling, landing on my forehead, snaking down until this is all. We don't need any of this. What's the matter, boy? He said, seeming to be amused, rack out your tongue. We, we don't even need that. Like, what's the matter, boy? Rack out your tongue. Yeah, see, and that, that says everything. It's like the character is noticing that he's not talking, and now he's telling us, the reader, that he has noticed that, and we can infer the rest of this nonsense. He chuckled, breath catching. He hunched over in a fit of violent coughing. Chuck he chuckled, breath catching. He hung. It's so choppy. Like, you have these, like, really awkward, like, chop sentences. I don't really know how to fix it other than just, like, the way you use commas is like a little dicey. They're correct when you're using them, but there's a lot of like, it's just very choppy and especially up at the top towards the start of it. His coughs gradually subsided and he collapsed back into the chair, panting. Looking at his shriveled figure, now all the more drained by exertion. What? Looking at his shriveled figure, now all the more drained by its exertion, I was sick with guilt for a crime I had not yet committed. That's good. Now we have some stakes. Move this up significantly right like this right here this is our lead this is the story like we we kind of have known that maybe he was up to no good but like it took so long to get there and we didn't really learn that much like just this alone like you could you could strip more than half these words out is what i'm saying so i've been told i began each word needs some water. Each word heavy on my tongue. Oh yeah. I spoke slowly, pushing them out with difficulty. If you are not able to make your debt, I'm going to kill you. I don't think we need all this. The rain surged. The bull's rhythms okay, so it is a debt collection. I think that this is like something that we may want to move up also, like this is like antagonist, protagonist. Only we're the we're the antagonist. Which is fine, like that's not a problem. The rain surged, the bowels, the bowls rhythm <laughs> bowels. <laughs> the bowls rhythms became more chaotic. The frenzied tempo that came that kept time with the beating of my heart. I don't I don't like this. It's it's a sympathetic fallacy. I think that's what it's called at least. It's where you try to like personify something that isn't alive as if it kind of is, or you like draw a parallel to something living. I don't really like it. A gust of wind swept through a broken window, setting the candle swaying. It's kind of poetic. I kind of like that. Behind the man, my shadow danced. Eh, fine. He nodded slowly, running a palm over the back of his hand as he thought. I see. His voice was as bereft as the color of his skin. I think that you can delete this and move this here. Like something simple like that can just make it a little bit flowing better, I think. But this is my opinion. I, I could be wrong on that one. Okay, water splashed and boots scraped on stone. As an unseen person passed on the street outside, keys jingled and a male voice swore. How relevant is this? Why murder, the old man asked. Like, if this is, like, a, it's what they call a metronome sentence, where, like, it's, like, you're trying to show that time has passed, like, tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, then just delete it, because we don't need it. Why murder, the old man asked. I cannot imagine that would provide a particularly profitable outcome and ought to create more problems than it's worth. Moreover, I am certain that blah, 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 you were dispatched here. Okay. Boom. I suspected he was right. The thought had occurred to me when I read the letter containing my instructions, but I allowed it to be forgotten. It troubled me again when I stood on the street watching 
flickering light. So when he's banging on the door, this is just my opinion. When he's banging on the door, that's when we should know kind of what's up. Like we should already have these instructions. Maybe he should be looking at them like, like kill him. And like, that's like, now there's tension immediately in the scene. Like if we know we're going in with an antisocial disposition, we can analyze the scene very differently from a conscionable level, as opposed to devoting all of our brain power into graphics rendering the fucking mold on the walls, wasting our time with the sound of, of all this different bullshit echoing in the night, when actually what we need is, is a humanized character with some stakes involved. Anyways, uh, you should understand that this is not an order able to be questioned. Okay. No, of course. You are as much victim here as me. No, this is not right. I will not infantilize you. You came here. It's just like everything he says is annoyingly superfluous and it doesn't flow. That's my issue with it. It's like he's not saying anything intellectual. It's not like we're Jordan. Ugh. Former daddy. Ex-daddy. Former professor, Dr. Jordan Peterson. It's not like that. We're like he's long winded. He's verbose. But like he's kind of saying something that's like tangible. And so people like follow it. Whereas this is just like some old dude that we've never heard of that we don't care about. Who's going to die. Who's just like, oh, blah, blah, blah. I'm so smart. I read all these like almanacs and like I'm very politically savvy and I could clearly be smarter than you, but you're going to kill me. Oh, I don't care. Actually, you know what? Boom. That's the core point of it. it. Would do you an injustice, reflective. Okay, I'm not one for excuses. My legs shook. I shifted weight onto the other foot. Yeah, whatever. Yes, he said. A cornered animal does not search for reason. It simply snarls at the handler with the club in its hand. Regardless, so okay. Is this supposed to be one of those scenes where, like, that this is what you're writing it as? Because if yes, it hasn't been framed this way up and until this point. There's been no snarling. There's been no, like, if you can show this and then deliver this line this far down that backs up the scene that you've been setting, like the subtext matches where it's actually spoken, even if it's spoken kind of out of context to what is being revealed, then you can get away with this. Otherwise, I don't like this. He found his answer because it's a cliche, right? Like, it's like, it's like, it's a cliche, but it's like a moral cliche that like, we've heard this before. It's so fatigued. And if we haven't heard it before, it's because it's vague and it's not actually intellectual. Like he's not really saying anything that smart. He found his answer in the tightness of my jaw and the fear in my eyes. Um I I guess, but like we've had a lot of these micro movements. Like we've had a lot of this like like I feel like you're like the animator for like um the movie I Robot, where like you've been tasked with making the robot more appealing to an audience and you're just trying to like render those graphics you know just try to like each and every single thing that is happening is being like telegraphed to us rather than just kind of exposed properly and properly is kind of a vague word but like it just doesn't seem like this is working like we get all these little teeny things like he sighed oh shit that was weird what the hell that was really weird. I, I hit a button. Sorry about that. Okay, so blah, 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 like a cornered animal. And again, this is like kind of the core of the story. Like this is what the subtext of the story is. And this is what the framing is supposed to be. And if it isn't going to match up with that, then you need to change this intellectual like line that he's trying to cliche. And you need to change it into something uh, that has been happening which I don't really think has, because I've been reading this, and up until this point, I haven't really understood the scene this way. So he found his answer in the tightness of my jaw and the fear in my eyes. Like, okay, fine. He sighed. I see a shame. We don't really need this sighing. Oh, shit. We're back to editing again? Is that what happened? Yeah, that was weird. I don't know. I took him by the arm, gently lifting him from the chair. How weak have I become, he murmured, still holding onto my arm for support. I was there... At the barricades, you know, I helped spear. I held. I held a spear beside uh, yonder and Mar Margo. Is this like the French Revolution, like 1792 or something? Otherwise, I don't know who these people are, and I don't care. I watched my brothers and sisters blood run across the cobbles of the University Square. If this is a historical incident that I don't know about, that's my fault. And but if it's not, then this is irrelevant, and I don't care. 
I found for what I believed in. I fought for what I believed in. Uh, like, do like does does I I I don't know because again I don't know if this is like historical, but these specific like what I crossed out doesn't seem inherently relevant to the scene you're trying to frame, and therefore I think it's extraneous. If I'm wrong, then obviously I'm wrong in this case. So. He looked up at the ceiling. Okay, like, do we do we care about this? Like, do we care about the? Do we care about any of this? There was rain like this on that day. He continued, voice tingling, tingled with t tinge. Sorry, jeez, man, the dyslexia is real today. Voice tinged with memory. I hate the rain. Nothing good happens when it's raining. This is this is a good line. Like this is again. This is like the core of the story. All there is to be done is to hide, to weather the storm, to wait for the sky to break. Why did you fight? Five to one. Armed soldiers against students, professors, librarians. It was suicide. Surely you all knew that. Because it was better than the alternative. Is that not the engine of any human action? Why did I get out of bed this morning? Because it was better than letting the rats nibble my toes. Why are you to kill me? Because you will face something at least equally painful if you do not. There are many... Uh, I think we can... I mean, unless this is like really relevant, we can leave that. There may never be a successful revolution, but sometimes there is no choice but to revolt. All action is resistance against an indifferent world. Revolution is no different. We struggle not because we want to, but instead because we must. I finished. Voice scarcely a whisper. A single exhalation that carried a sensation I had felt many times before. So they're both revolutionaries. They're both on the same side. Why are you going to kill me? Blah, blah, blah. I'm old. You're young. He looked up at me. A wistful smile ghosted his lips. Ugh, I don't know. Because we must, he affirmed. This is absurd, I said, freeing my arm from his grip and striding back to his bed. I lifted up, searching something, ser searching beneath it for hidden valuables, but only succeeding in disturbing a family of cockroaches lurking in the chamber pot. Gross. I returned to the mantle, opening each book, shaking them in hopes of some forgotten check left inside. So basically, this is a good. This is actually really good. So the reason this is so good is because. It's it plays at the same emotional core of this story, which is guilt, remorse, and like, um, uh, what's the word like? Tyranny, but like the struggle against it. Like you're being forced to do something against your will. You don't really want to kill this man. You're looking for an out. And I think that this is the most characterizing paragraph you've had so far. So, it's a little concerning that it's this far in, but um, we're there. So. Entirely, he replied, watching me search. But does that not make it all the more fitting? To indulge in something completely absurd is the most life-affirming action a person could perform. Indulgence, I cannot think of anything more human. This becomes all the clearer in the face of something apparently meaningful. Like, I get it, he's trying to be wise, but like, I'm just not impressed with this. Like death, yes, like death. Where's, where's the fainting couch when we need one? He limped over to the window, leaning on its sill, looking through the smashed glass. Okay, we can do this up, but we can do this sooner too. Like maybe the place where you were like some random dude went by and coughed or whatever. I've always, this is again, this is metron. It's like a, it's a, it's a broken metronome. Like you're, you're putting a sentence to just like keep a beat, and it's not really working. I always hated the view from this window. For men as immobile as I, windows are important. All I can see from here is my neighbor's houses. A family lives there. The father is a laborer and a drunk. Too often I watch his children creep out the door when he returns home from a difficult day. They huddle under the eave, wincing with each smashed bottle and furious yell. I taught them to read and write for a time before their parents found out. It ended as well as you might expect. He gestured to the smash pane. Like... Fine, he has a life, he's here, whatever. A part of me loathes you. It wishes that you had knocked on that bastard's door, not mine. But that is selfish of me. This is still the old man, I guess. Um, what would become of those children if he were to lose his income? What would become of the poor, terrified woman that is their mother? This part of me is as scared as they are. Regrettably, I am both too old, proud to indulge the frightened children within me. Frightened child within me. Sorry, I mixed the word children in like that because I am dyslexic. He wrapped his knuckles on the sill. Let this be my advice to you. 
struggle, struggle with all your might, not let the suffering of the world overcome you, resist, not because you want to, but because you must. He nodded to himself, he nodded once to himself, seeming satisfied. Our time together has finished. I could no longer deny it. My hand trembled as it reached into my coat for the club fastened to its lining. Before I could draw it, the old man snatched up a long shard of glass. I lurched backwards, fumbling with my weapon, but he pulled back his sleeve and... I closed the door with a tug. Water coursed over the cobble. As a river, I tossed the bloodied shard of glass into the gutter. Dark rivulets screamed off of it. Rivulets? Rivulets? I don't know this word. This may just be one of those times I just don't know a word. There seems to be one in every single story I read, so... Twisting down the gutter alongside dead leaves and urban detritus. I like that word. But it's kind of a rare esoteric word. Definitely a $10 word. I stood there for a moment, letting the rain soak my blood-drenched clothes. The sunken faces of two children watched me from beneath the eave of the neighboring house. I cannot meet their eyes. Stepping out of the street, I walked off into the sun and night. I hate the rain. It lets loose the misery gathering above the city and flows like bad blood through its veins. Nothing good happens when it's raining. It rains too often in this random place that you don't care about. <sighs> like, there's elements of brilliance here. Like, we call back to this, where we started. But the problem is that everything's so mis mismatched. Like, things don't really... Like, they don't start as they end. There doesn't seem to be, like, a clear conclusion. It drags way too long. Nothing really happens. It's just, like, some overly verbose dude comes in to the house... Or, or some random dude comes into the house of this like verbose old man who's just like very smart and is just like, oh yes, all these cliches. I'm actually really poor. It's crazy that you're here to kill me because of hierarchy and power and revolution. But like, it's all very incoherent and it doesn't strike me as like profound. I'm not sure if it was trying to be. I think it's just practice writing. I didn't really think that the characters existed. Like they don't, they don't feel like characters. They feel like you know, I mean, it's not terrible. Like I said, there's like the strokes of brilliance in here. Some of this is like fun themes to explore. But I think until it's more polished with like what the themes are going to be and which which sentences are going to tie to which other sentences, then a lot of this is just kind of disjointed. Now, I understand that it's only five pages. But in those five pages, um, there's a lot, a lot of this. Like there's like if it's green texting, like it jerked open to reveal an elderly man. He looked up at me his hunched figure just below my shoulder. Like, it's just, it's too much fucking information. It's too much. So, time to write my final critique. I'm going to mute my microphone for this, and then I'll uh, probably have some more words.
Yo, how the fuck you spell rhythmic right now? Like, seriously, dude? Like, what the fuck? I'm over here trying to spell the word rhythmic. I'm so fucking stoned. R-H-Y-T-H-M-I-C. Really? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That one seems wrong. Lack, lack, lackluster. That one seems like I have it correct. In between, is that really two words? Is ecosystem really one word? Is vaguity really not thing? Like, mostly I was just trying to choose, like, a bunch of, like, annoying, like, words. Like, a lot of these words are just kind of, like, they're almost correct. You could almost use them. The Sentra. Sentra. This one's just a typo. Typographical. Oh, this one's just missing a T. Doesn't. Yeah, I mean, like, without spell check, like, I'm doomed, obviously. So, this, these are my thoughts, and I definitely appreciate being given access to read this. Um, 
working title, The Road to Ruin or The World Without Names. Yet yeah, Neither of those tie in at all. Calm the open, running for shelter, laughing. Now I love it. I have PTSD. I had to kill a guy. I'm so guilty. He was dying anyway, so it's like I'm kind of morally absolved. Like, looking back at it in its totality, there's definitely some parts here that work. But, like, just look at all this, like, space of words that's just, like, most of them are not accomplishing anything. Some of them are not accomplishing enough. And those that are are strained under the weight of having to support the rest of it. And I think if you were really to streamline this and get down to the core of what is actually being discussed here across the table and, like, which cliches you want to actually ex uh, expound upon then there's a very decent chance that this can have some form of like start, escalation, revealing of stakes, conclusion, etc. Like this needs to follow um, more of a traditional mold, I suppose, than it is. Like it's not trying to do anything too fancy, but it is trying to do some things a little bit too min-maxed. Like it's like, it's very like, I don't want to say it's purple prose because it's not. I don't want to say like noir because it doesn't strike me as noir. And I'm not really sure what kind of genre this is, but I get that the tone, like, um, I may have read this through kind of wrong um, because I have like a preconceived notion of what I think genre should be. And this may just be something I'm very unfamiliar with, but yeah, I stand by most of this. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining guys. I really hope you learned something and um, I hope to be back again kind of soon.